So Google and DeepMind have been on an absolute tear with their visual AI releases. First Lumiere, the text-to-video, and now Imogen 2, their most advanced text-to-image technology. And the images look good. Photorealistic, vivid, stunning, accurate. Let's take a look at what it's capable of, how you can use it, and what this means for Google. So first of all, Imogen 2, it's their text-to-image diffusion technology, photorealistic outputs, and lifelike images. And it's going to be available in BARD, Search Generative Experience, SGE, as they're going to refer to it as, and a Google Labs experiment called ImageFX. We'll look at that in just a sec. And the Google Arts and Culture team is also working on their Cultural Icons experiment. And developers will have access to Imogen API in the cloud. We'll go back and dive deep into every single one of those. Here's an example of a text and the image it produces. The prompt is a long-haired miniature dachshund on a couch. Next, we have a jellyfish on a black background and a small canvas oil painting of an orange on a chopping board. Light is passing through orange segments, casting an orange light across part of the chopping board. There's a blue and white cloth in the background, caustics, bounce light, expressive brush strokes, which I gotta say, like this really feels like there's light passing through the orange slice and it's sort of shining here on whatever this is. They're saying this is the chopping board. That is very detailed. That's a very true interpretation of prompt to image. And so they're saying that they have improved image caption understanding and they're adding further descriptions to image captions for the Imogen 2's uh, training set. And here's some details about how well it can understand these images. So for example, this prompt is, soft pearl the streams, the birds renew their notes, and through the air their mingled music floats. Here's a passage out of Moby Dick. Consider the subtleness of the sea, how its most dreaded creatures glide underwater, unapparent for the most part, and treacherously hidden beneath the loveliest tints of azure. Here's a passage from the Secret Garden, and I gotta zoom in on this thing because this looks, I gotta say, this is very impressive. You can really see the little folds in the feathers, the fur, even like the individual moss, moss particles or whatever you want to call them are rendered so well. You can see the sun reflecting in the eyes. It's, it's really good. You can see the sun reflecting in this bird's eyes. And they also talk about the more realistic image generation, including realistic hands and human faces and minimizing the various visual artifacts that sometimes pop up which indeed all these hands look very, very lifelike, including the sort of field of view, this kind of blurring effect that happens. And they're trained a specialized image aesthetics model based on human preferences for things like lighting, framing, exposure, sharpness, and more. And so far, I gotta say, all of these look like art pieces, something you might see in a gallery. They all have kind of that artistic aesthetic. I'm not sure if there's a specific name for it, but they don't look like, but they look like images you would see in a gallery or magazine covers fluid style conditioning. So this is interesting. So here are some AI generated images using the prompt flower with lower aesthetic scores on the left to higher scores on the right. So these would be sort of to the human eye, the least sort of attractive. And yeah, I mean, these do seem kind of blah. This may be a little bit better, some color contrast, etc. Nicer, nicer. And here is what supposed to be the best one. And certainly, yeah, I gotta say compared to this, yeah, I mean, this looks much more appealing. Here's an image I made earlier. It says, please hit the thumbs up button so we can feed our robot. So hit thumbs up if you like it. Not sure how this got in here. Next, they're talking about fluid style conditioning. Their new techniques provide a high degree of flexibility, making it easier to control and adjust the style of the image. By providing reference style images in combination with a text prompt, we can condition Imogen 2 to generate new imagery that follows the same style. This is very cool. And certainly I can see this being used for product creation, which may be the kind of what they're suggesting here. So you provide some context images of these leaves and plants and greenery. And you say a studio product shot of an, you know, blank, whatever object you want. So kind of a professional photography of a product, like a coffee mug with this sort of style or a shirt or a sideboard or a pillow. And these are looking excellent, of course. Advanced in painting and out painting. And so users can generate new content directly into the original image, which is called in painting, or extend the original image beyond its normal borders, which is called out painting. So sort of imagine what the rest of the scene would look like. Here they're showing you an example of in painting. They're adding a shelf with some books and vases hanging on the wall. 
And here's out painting where they're asking the AI to sort of recreate the rest of the scene or imagine what the rest of the scene would look like, which in the past I've seen examples of this leading to hilarious outcomes. One of the most entertaining things I've seen is where people on Twitter, of course, where else, take these, let's say, salacious images that are really cropped and they ask the poor AI to, you know, render the rest of it. And of course it has to do it by making it completely harmless and kid friendly, which it does. And you got to give it props for that. But as with a lot of this, the thing that we really want to know is like, are those images a good representation of what it does? Or are those like just the best of the highlight reel? So let's find out for ourselves. I'll link everything down below. So this is image effects and they have multiple things here like music effects and text effects, which we have to take a look at music effects at the end. I'd be curious to see how well they do that, but let's sign in. And so here's how that looks like. At the bottom here, it looks like we have some sort of themes we can apply like photorealistic, 35 millimeter film, minimal, sketchy, handmade. Let's we'll start with rat praying with folded hands. I love, really love how they try to adapt hands, animal hands holding objects or doing human-like things with them. So, but they said that's that goes against their policies. So maybe instead of praying, we'll stay standing and we'll try that again. So they sort of generate these like fill in the blanks for me to help me, you know, maybe get some new ideas to try, which I got to say, this is very cool. This is a very good idea that helps. I mean, I got to say a lot of these are great kind of folded hands. Okay. I mean, it's not what I was looking for. How about crossed arms? That's a good one. That's not exactly what I was trying to go for, but I should probably specify what what sort of style I'm looking for, etc. I mean, this is excellent. All right, let's try something else. Let's do, let's try a beautiful woman tanning on the moon. All right, so now they give us some suggestions for beautiful. We can do ugly, mediocre, or amazing. Tanning, we can do swimming, running, sleeping on the moon, Earth, Mars, Jupiter. So they immediately switched that into more like illustration. Can we add photorealistic? Wow, Google, I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Did you have a disclaimer here? AI outputs may sometimes be offensive or inaccurate. I'm going to go ahead and download that one, but I'm going to guess Google does not want stuff like this generated. Let's try a different one. First person shooter game in the style of Van Gogh. All right. So this goes against their policies, probably because of the first person shooter game. How about first person perspective game? Still, oh, maybe Van Gogh is the issue. In the style of a Renaissance painting. So it didn't like the fact that I said in the style of Van Gogh. All right, so it's doing this, but it's not quite what we're looking for. But again, we had to change that. We had to change our initial prompt. Let's let's try shooter in the style of a Renaissance painting. So it, it captures the Renaissance painting. And yes, certainly it's first person, but all right. So it's nailing the shooter game part of it, but it's not first person. Although I got to say, I kind of like what's happening there. I would like to know more about the story that's happening there. Doom 2 in the style of a Renaissance painting. All right. So they got, they got the Marine and I got to say, this is looking pretty good. How about God of Wine? All right. That's looking a little bit weird at that first one. This one's pretty good. Let's take a look at the hands there. Cause they're, let's see. I mean, hands are notoriously difficult for both artists and AI to do. This one's looking really good. And this one, I mean, I got to say it's not bad. I mean, it's a weird, weird hand position. He's kind of got a claw grip on this, whatever this thing, wine chalice or whatever. But I mean, it's, it's not looking horrible. I would say you can see where all the fingers are kind of, it, it's not bad. It's weird, but it's not bad. And then we got this and this, the, those are good. I got to say anthropomorphic cat holding up a torch inside a dark church. Let's see. We're getting a little bit more specific now. That prompt goes against our policies. Okay. So it doesn't like praying or church or anything of the sort, but the point is we wanted something that's not a, that's not well lit and that's a cool location. So it could be, I mean, it could be a dark castle. All right. So it seems cool if that, oh, that is pretty, pretty good. Wow. So I'm really liking this. Again, it made the human-like hands here, you know, this hand holding a torch, you know, again, notoriously hard for them to have an animal hand holding something since, you know, they don't have a lot of training data on cats holding torches, but everything else is phenomenal. The lighting is excellent because you can see this is like the main source of light that's falling on the face and on the cloak, but it looks like there's a blue light shining from behind and it's falling on the back of the 
of the head on the back of the cloak and also here on the torch. And everything about this is exactly as I described it. Here's two more, you know, both good, but this first one was the most striking to me. Let's get a little more specific. How about it's a Tonkinese cat? How do you spell Tonkinese? All right, let's see if they can do a Tonkinese cat. Because those have a very specific look, and I got to say, it's kind of nailing it. This one's looking a little bit weird, but this, again, I think really good. It automatically assumed it's, you know, wearing armor because of the torch in the castle. So it's kind of putting in the right, it's in the right sort of time period, right? It's not wearing like a spacesuit, which is good. And how about that Tonkinese cat? Now it's going to have shiny teeth. Okay, now it's getting, it got weird, but it's still very, very close. Let's take out the teeth. Let's try Technopunk. How about a Technopunk mining gnome? Discovering a prized gem inside a mine. So that's pretty good. The gem is kind of floating there. Here he's holding it. Here it's shining. These are very good. Yeah, this is great. Now, can we make it pixel art? Meaning, can we make it more like a video game pixelated character instead of, you know, this kind of storybook illustration? That's pretty cool. It's very good. I mean, he's definitely nailing the prompt. Let's see if we can do macro photography of an eye with golden light. That is excellent. How about Lion Samurai magazine cover art illustration? Wow, these are very, very good. How about Cyborg Female Scientist Detailed Manga? It goes against the policy, so it's probably the style. It does not like, how about, how about graphic novel? Would you do graphic novel? All right, so this is a graphic novel. It's okay. Let's try a soldier. It goes against the policies. You've suggested that prompt to me. Okay, anime? Oh, soldier. You don't like the soldier. How about engineer? I got to say, I do like this little drop, you know, fill in the blank, whatever. So the ability to rapidly change up styles and specific, like if I want to change this to an animal, we can quickly regenerate that. I do like this. This is very helpful because with other tools, you do spend quite a bit of time of like typing and retyping and doing all sorts of stuff. And here's the Cyborg Animal Engineer detailed anime. That is pretty good. How about a marble statue of a beautiful cyborg face? That's not quite what we were looking for. So that's, I don't think that's marble. Marble statue of a, how about an ugly face? Nope, can't do it because it can't call people ugly, I guess. So it's optimizing. So if it if it uh, kicks it out because of a policy, it does re-optimize it for you. Let's see, mysterious face. How about that marble statue of a mysterious face? All right, these are okay. A, I would say, but not great. How about a massive megalodon emerging out of the darkness to eat a ship? All right. So, well, this ship appears to be underwater. I mean, this is cool, but it doesn't really make sense. The ship should be on top of the water. How about Oracle fantasy setting, demonic eyes, heavy brush strokes. That is pretty cool. So I would say, so Oracle, so it's got the third eye, fantasy setting, heavy brush strokes. I like it. Brain diagram in the style of Renaissance. There's one, what is happening here? I mean, I like it. I just don't know what it is. Kind of a simple one. And this, so it's, this is okay, I would say. So here's a prompt that I did in mid journey. This is what the mid journey result was. So I'll put us something very similar. I have to change the last part to famous artist, adorable Sphinx cat baby with large glossy blue eyes and calligraphy tattoos photographed by famous artist. That is much better than I thought it would be. I feel like it's not quite the same level as mid journey, but this is a hard prompt, right? Cause you have tattoos, calligraphy, right? So you got writing. You have tattoos. You also have a sphinx cat, which is incredibly difficult to 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 draw. Bright blue eyes. I mean, this, I, I got to give it credit. It's excellent. I feel like Mid Journey is slightly better, just more detailed, more stuff going on. But these are hard, hard to do. New York sun setting between buildings. So apparently that's against the policies. And I can't possibly tell what they have a problem with here other than New York. I guess it's Google, so maybe San Francisco. Is that better? Wow. Okay, so New York, not appropriate, but San Francisco is okay. All right. Again, I'm, I'm making jokes about some stuff here, but keep in mind, this is brand new. And I got to say, I'm very, very happy that Google is releasing this as soon as it's available. They're not scared of having a few glitches here and there. I would 
vote for that every single time. I'm, I'm so happy that they're doing this, uh, even if it generates, you know, naughty images every once in a while or the content policy is, is a little bit off. That's totally okay. One effect I really loved in Mid Journey is this thing. So this is kind of, we're saying it's kind of like double exposure that we're using here. So it's a rabbit, but it's also amber and it's sunlight. So it's a combination of an animal with amber-like qualities and sunlight, sunlight shining through it. Oh, and also it's a rabbit with horns, FYI. A strange creature called the sharp horned rabbit. Double exposure photography, amber 4K, high detail. So these used to add stuff like this into Midjourney to make it look better. It's not as relevant anymore. Let's let's see where this takes us. All right, so it's got the double exposure effect going on. I like it. The rabbit is a normal rabbit. Here's the rabbit with the horns. Here's the rabbit with the double exposure photography, kind of an ambered colored rabbit. How about a rabbit made of amber? Rabbit made of amber with sunlight shining through. Let's try that. So I think with Midjourney, there's certain prompt engineering you do to make it look the way you want. With Google, I think you're just kind of saying what you want. It's better at capturing exactly what you say, because this, I got to say, this nails that prompt beautifully. So if you look at this thing, so that's a rabbit. Obviously, it's made out of amber, and it certainly has sunlight shining through. Uh, this is phenomenal. Let's see if it can do an assortment of people, 8-bit tech workers in a lineup white background. So we're looking for kind of like, you know, if in a video game you have like a party of characters, like five or six characters. Yeah, that's pretty good. How about 8-bit tech workers working in a video game office? And here are the results. So one thing that I'm noticing is, and I got to give Google credit for this, it's a lot more like literal. It takes everything a little bit more literally. Tech workers, pixel art style. So I'm realizing I've been using a certain shorthand with Midjourney to produce the images that I want. So like when I try to tell it to do like 8-bit, kind of that sometimes creates the style that I want. But I guess it's not, you know, exactly 8-bit is what I'm looking for. So here's pixel art style tech workers. Uh, well, it's okay. So here's a mid-journey picture. Watercolor painting of a close-up section of a Byzantine mosaic. The scene shows a robot with humanoid face and intricate metalwork surrounded by a halo of golden tesserae. The robot is looking upwards with its hands reaching out as if in prayer or yearning. The mosaic tiles are finely detailed, capturing the rich textures and colors of the Byzantine era. So here are the results. Did we say robots? Shows a robot with a humanoid face. Let's delete everything after robot and see if shortening that helps. So watercolor painting of a close-up section of a Byzantine mosaic. How about just Byzantine mosaic robot? Let's try that. I want to see if it's able to do this sort of object in this style. Because it kind of captured the style. Okay, so the robot is... I mean, these are pretty cool looking. I gotta say, I mean, this is this one is is striking. This thing is weird. Uh, that's a cool looking picture. That's a very weird but cool looking picture. How about a up close shot of a robot hand holding pen? Exquisite detail. Here's a similar sort of prompt from Midjourney. As you can see here, very exquisite detail in the robot hand. You know, it's holding a pen. I guess this is it's more like coming out of its finger, but it's it's drawing something. And here's Google's version, this is pretty cool. I mean, that is pretty good. I got to say how it's holding it is a little bit weird, but although I can see if this is the index finger, that's the thumb, that would be sort of the correct grip or at least very close to a correct grip. Uh, and I got to say the intricate detail or exquisite detail, I, I definitely feel like it captured it from the writing and the knuckles and whatever it's writing on. This is excellent. I have to ask it to do a siphonophore cat. I feel like at this point, it's almost obligatory. Siphonophores, to people who are not aware, these are real creatures that live in the ocean. They are probably some of the weirdest things alive, I think. They're actually not one creature, but rather a colony of various different creatures that kind of combine together to form one, I guess, entity, you could call it. And oftentimes you have one object that kind of controls the whole thing or one create one sort of species of creatures. And then it's like how it like attacks things is like a different set of species. And then its stomach, how it like digests them is like a different one. So it's bizarre. How it consumes its prey is the stuff of nightmares. I'm not going to talk about that here. So here's a siphon for cat, which I don't think any of this. So I would say no on this one. So if you wanted to see what Midjourney does for that, is, you know, this I think is a pretty good representation here, more like artistic representations. But I feel like it's um, 
just gets a little bit weirder and a little bit closer to the prompt. Although for this one, I, I did use a little bit of a different one. Let's test that. Let's test that one out. So I found it for a cat with long tail with glowing orbs, black background, Unreal Engine. It's not going to like Unreal Engine. I already know it. All right. So still no siphon for looking things. So one thing that people use AI art for is for character generation. So let's see how well it handles different ethnicities. So let's start with this. Attractive, dark-skinned, female mage casting a spell. We're going to do character illustration, fantasy. So let's try that. So this is where Midjourney shines and is really good at this. So it says this goes against our policies. All right, let's try to figure out exactly what the issue is. So if we delete the last part, nope. If we change it to light skin female, does that help? Nope. Okay, so it's not. It might be that. But literally what we're trying to do, nope. I wish I would give you more like a hint about what the issue is. Okay, so is that attractive? Okay, so this I think worked. Okay, so female mage casting a spell. Okay, we can work with that. So here's what it gives us. All right, so if we do, let's say Chinese and keep the rest the same, how well that goes against the policies and changing it to Japanese, for example. Nope. How about Caucasian female mage casting a spell? Nope. Okay, so it sounds like they don't want to deal with that yet. Hopefully in the future, they'll allow you to customize the appearance of people. Currently, it doesn't seem like there's any way to sort of customize the appearance of the person. I mean, at least you can't really specify skin tones or ethnicity or anything like that, it seems, which might be difficult for it, like if you're trying to do character creation. But again, keep in mind, this is very early beta. So how about a fiery image of a Balrog demon with flames surrounding it in the style of Lord of the Rings? It's going to not like the style of Lord of the Rings. Let's delete that. All right. It doesn't want demon, I'm assuming there. Let's see. This might be flames surrounding it. Might be the issue there. Fiery image of a Bal Balrog? Nope. But icy image maybe? So maybe just, no. Image of a Balrog? Nope. Okay, so literally... How about a sketch of a alien ship in the style of Leonardo da Vinci? All right, they're not liking Leonardo da Vinci. How about in the style of medieval scrolls? Okay, did that. Uh, that's pretty good. I like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is well done. All right, let's do a few just rapid fire tests to see how it handles. A couple of very specific things. For example, text. Gold coin with pirate on it. Written on the coin is five arg. That's pretty good. So I don't see the text on here, but this says arg. This kind of says rarg, but it has the five on it. I don't see a five on here and I don't see a five on here, but this I have to say is pretty good. So it's got the pirate kind of skull and crossbones rarg, I guess. It's got the coin, like the minting stamp that they use, whatever it's called. And then it has a five. So this is very good. Although I don't know what's happening here with this fingernail, but th I'm, um, this is impressive. Muscle barbarian standing in front of a tavern with, si with signs saying, we'll slay for food. So this is the first one. It looks like it says something that seems like we'll slay for food, but the they nailed the barbarian in the tavern. I don't see a sign here. This says we'll slay for food, but the sign is a tavern sign. How about if we delete the whole tavern thing? All right, that's a lot better. So he's holding a sign saying we'll slay slay for food this one is perfect we'll slay for food we'll slay for food we'll slay our food okay different perspectives i think is one of the hardest things to generate with ai art so for example if you're underneath somebody looking up that is moderately difficult if you want to have the effect of them standing for example like on a glass ceiling above you so you see the bottom of their shoes and then the perspective of looking up at them that is extremely extremely difficult so let's say looking up at a person standing above you. So that's pretty good. I mean, this is definitely, I mean, that shows perspective pretty well. Let's try a person stepping on your chest. And I apologize if this is getting a little bit weird, but these are things that I have found nearly impossible to recreate in Midjourney and other AI tools. So it created an image, but, but the image was a little bit weird. I'm not even going to show that. Let's say people floating above you, you can see the bottom of their shoes. So this is probably the closest to what we're looking for. This is generally what you get, and that's not what we're looking for. Looking up at people sitting above you, feet dangling above your head. This is kind of the perspective that I'm trying to get. But as you can see, it, it's all sorts of weird. It's kind of poorly done, and, and these are just completely weird. But this, at least it's able to do this. So this is an example of what that would look like. Here's another great one from Midjourney. 
So as you can see here, he's kind of like, it's almost like he's standing on a glass ceiling above you. Those are very difficult to do. So it's kind of these perspective shots. A similar one is, so if a person's pointing at, at you, so their finger's kind of very close to your eyes, so they're almost like kind of in your face to where the finger is blurry. So kind of like this is kind of what we're looking for. So this is pretty good. Let's say finger is detailed. The person is blurry. Can we, can we do that? That, that is excellent. Okay, this is like the closest that I've seen to it nailing something similar to that prompt. This is pretty, pretty good. I gotta say, okay, this is, this is impressive. I asked ChatGPT to describe some characteristics in portraits that make people feel uneasy. And some of the things it mentions, for example, that feeling of the uncanny valley where something is not quite human, not quite, you know, doll or robot or something. Direct gaze, distorted proportions or features, ambiguity, incongruity, unnatural poses or expressions. So let me paste that in here. And I also put female face on white background just so it's kind of a direct comparison. So that's against the policies, maybe because of the unnatural poses. Let me just say person. How about that? Nope. That, that one's not working. Here's another thing in Mid Journey. So can you describe a person with sunglasses on and describe a scene in the sunglasses? And we've hit our daily generation limit. I got to say that was quite a bit. I feel like we've generated, I mean, it's got to be dozens of images. And this is nine, but that was like session two. So it has a pretty good, um, you know, limit for a free tool, I would say. So what we were looking at was image FX, but this will also be available in Bard. So this is Bard and you're able to generate the images through here. And here's cultural icons. We can explore, learn, and test your cultural knowledge with the help of Google AI. And here you play little games of AI that are designed to make you learn more stuff by selecting one of these icons. We're not gonna go over into it, but the final piece of the puzzle that I think is important to understand is this Imogen API in Vertex AI which will allow you to generate high quality, high resolution, pleasing images, logo generation, and it's enterprise ready text to image capabilities. So you're able to create product shots, logos, etc. Google has a very neat little video that goes over it. And the important thing here is of course the copyright questions. If you're an enterprise and you're using AI art, you don't get sued. So Google is has a two pronged copyright indemnification approach. So basically they will protect you from getting into legal trouble if you're using this to generate images. With Vertex AI, you can interact with, tune, customize, and embed foundation models into your applications. No ML expertise required. Let's say we wanna add a new product to our catalog and handbags are always popular. In Vertex AI, I can simply choose Imagine, our text to image foundation model, and I'll go ahead and enter my desired prompt, and ta-da, I now have multiple variations to work with. If I wanna tweak the design, I have more power than simple in-painting. Let's change the material to iridescent blue with a scale texture and add a tassel. Typically, we would now create a physical prototype of the bag to take it to market, but we only have a few minutes, so let's use an existing tote bag and show how we can generate creative options with Vertex AI. I took a few pictures of the bag using my phone and was able to fine tune a model with them. I can now see my handbag literally anywhere, from the Grand Canyon to the beach to the city. With Vertex AI, I can quickly and easily upscale it so it looks consistent on high resolution displays. As I'm expanding globally, the power of Vertex AI will let me generate text captions for accessibility and localize them into more than 300 languages. So at the end of the day, I gotta say, I'm very impressed by, I think I called it Imogen 2, like 50 times in this video. In the video by Google, they referred to it as Imagine, Imagine 2. So however you pronounce that, I gotta say, I'm very impressed. It has some incredibly great capabilities, great attention to detail. It can do certain things that are just notoriously difficult for other AI models to do. I would say that maybe something like Midjourney can do more, more artistic stuff, more off the cuff stuff. There's less limitations. I found myself constantly running into, you know, the content policies, even though it wasn't quite obvious what the violation was. Mentioning seems like a gender or ethnicity or anything like that was a, a no-no. It seems like they're very careful about that. Anything to do with religion or anything like that. So they're still working it out. But I got to say, right out of the gate, as is, this thing is a strong contender. And I think for enterprise people, for big companies, this is the way to go. 
And we're going to start seeing a lot more AI art or AI images everywhere on e-commerce sites, in stores, etc. All in all, I got to say, this is an impressive showing if they keep improving it, if they keep improving the content policy and the image production, like, but as it is, it's just, it's really good. I am very surprised. And obviously it's just going to keep getting better and better. Thank you for watching. My name is Wes Roth. I'm off to buy myself some Symbol toothpaste. This image really makes me want to buy it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.